my vice. Men up from Mars, he tripping, I put that on guard. I got the digits, but I am not calling. Wizard at night, this be that forum. Hi everybody, the Stacked After Hours Spot. I am your host, Natalie Cosby, and welcome to the show for Grown Folks Talk. So tonight we are talking about how do you present? I know a lot of you guys are back on the dating scene, especially if you are newly single. And how we're presenting at this age is a little different from when we were in our 20s and 30s. So y'all, get y'all's cocktails, get those fingertips loose, because we want to hear your questions and comments on tonight's show. And here at Saz Stacked After Hours, we keep it what? Lit and enlightening. So let's get into it. So tonight, I have a special guest host, Sunshine's on hiatus. So we have a friend of mine who is a celebrity photographer and image consultant. And just, I, I call him a lifestyle consultant. Let's welcome to the, to the show, Whitney T. Thomas. <laughs> Yeah. I'll say photographer. I don't know about lifestyle coach. I think you are a little bit of Kevin Samuel's Bob. I'm not on that. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, he's not that. Okay, so with me, we've been having this whole. We we talked a little bit earlier today, mm -hmm. and I I have a lot of folks who watch the show who are 40 plus, still single or newly divorced. They're back on the scene. They're presenting themselves in certain ways. And I was recently recently watching this come up. I was always look for stuff to talk about. But I was recently, recently watching YouTube, and I came across this conversation between Ebony K. Williams and Yvala Van Sant. And I just want you to kind of, Montaigne's going to play a little clip for us, but I want you to kind of give me your feedback. So, okay. Montaigne. Would you date a bus driver? You would you date if he bus owns bus? the bus? If he owns no. it, if he owns the bus, See, that's a it. problem. That's a problem. That's a problem okay. because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm -hmm. we are as women. I'm gonna stop it there. With me. Whitney. Well, can, can I say something? I'm, I'm going to say something. Not even okay. about what she said, but her whole nonverbal. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Well, <laughs> terrible. She's terrible. She's so, terrible. She's terrible. Okay, so women of her ilk would say, you know, I'm looking for somebody that meets my standards. If I make X, he should make X, all that stuff. If that's your thing, have at it. I don't have a problem with that. My issue, however, is she seems like a nasty person. Her whole vibe has like bad energy. And so you're this, she's a good looking woman. She, I guess she's somewhat successful. And so you're talking about what you want as far as dating and all that stuff. And apparently it's not working out for you because wherever you are right now with that energy that you're given, you don't have this guy that owns the bus right now. So bring it down like a thousand is my comment to that kind of attitude. Terrible. I mean, it, yes, it is terrible. But I think the thing is, is like, look, at this age, at 40 plus, women are expecting men to be kind of at a certain place in life. Not saying there's nothing wrong with the bus driver because the bus driver has a hell of a pension. He's probably making 
possibly 100K, especially if he's living in a major city and he's been doing that or a police officer or so on and so forth. But how she has been presenting all her life is the do that is the corporate do that has been able to measure up. And and I think that's it's I'm not mad at her for saying what she said. I know it's terrible with me. Well, I would say this. The person that's willing to disparage a group of people by saying I wouldn't I couldn't be bothered with them. I won't say she explicitly disparaged them, but she implicitly disparaged them. Mm-hmm. I would say the person that's willing to do that is probably the same person that when you're out on a date with her, you don't like her very much. So I I would bet the farm that she's been on dates with the bus owner, the bus company owner, guys who have whatever vibe that she's looking for. And it didn't work out because they didn't like her. And that's one of the things that people rarely talk about. A lot of women will give you this breakdown on what, oh, he got to be six, whatever. He got to be six, four and make a million dollars a year. And the guy that's six, four and meeting your criteria probably has been out with you a few times already. And he didn't like you. And so that's kind of one of the things that people don't talk about. Your personality is terrible. People go out on dates and guys who have, I call it the 80-20 rule. 80% of the women want 20% of the guys. They want that small subset of guys who are somewhat decent bill, decent looking guy, making nice money, life together. All the women want that same guy. And that guy knows that, right? So he's using that to his advantage. And so if this guy is going out on dates, because I've been that guy, and you are like a terrible personality you could be really attractive but you just you suck and i'm never going out with you again so she can come on the show and say you know oh i I want a man to be this this and this before i go out with him or that's my criteria but she's been out with men like that and they didn't like her they didn't choose her but you know what the funny thing is it's just like men be given that same damn energy and i agree with you with sisters i do i think but i the funny thing is it's like i think we at this age we have not elevated our thinking around who is who is the nicest person who is who meets me where i am or even I vibe with, it's like, it's all lost. It's all based on, because I know a lot of men have said like, oh, there's, they're not cute enough. I'm like, dude, you're not cute enough. You just had a heart attack and you look like a daggone Eskimo. Are you seriously <laughs> going to tell me that I'm not cute enough? Have you looked at yourself in the mirror? I know like dudes who are, you know, of, of a certain ilk, as you say, right. <laughs> and, and they, you know, they went to Harvard and so on and so forth, or they went to an Ivy League or whatever, but they're still whack. Yeah, well, and I, I think that's true on both sides. I think there are guys who are, you know, they out kicking their coverage. They think they're, you know, the coolest dude in the room and they're not just like women. But I think you hear it more from the women than you do from the men. I think guys are more willing to accept their lane where women are giving you this. Oh, he has to be this. He has to be that. I, how many times have you heard a long list from guys? Guys may want a woman that maybe is a little more attractive than they might normally pull. But and hey, you got to you got to shoot for the stars. Right. I'm not going to be mad at them. But the women usually have this list. Oh, he has to be over six feet. He got to be making six figures, that whole thing. And I'm like, first of all. If you limit your choice of men to six figures, I don't know what I know. The percentage of American men that make six figures is probably somewhere between 17 and 20 percent. Out of that 17 to 20 percent of American men, that percentage of black men is probably tiny, like probably less than one, I bet. And so you're limiting yourself to a small number of men because the the median household income for black households in America is like forty eight thousand dollars. I don't know. It's like, I'm not blaming you for wanting a brother that makes a nice, you know, piece of change. We should all want that. But how about you meet a brother that say he's making 60 grand, 70 grand, and you meet him. And if you're so dope and you're the kind of inspirational, encouraging kind of person that he would benefit from, you might be the one that elevates him from 60 to 160. You might be the, the thing that was missing in his life to move him from one place to another if you are a complimentary person to what he brings to the table. But people are so busy wanting somebody to come already, ready-made, here's everything that you wanted, 
I mean, like like you like they're looking for a genie. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> so like, run the genie, yeah. Come on. Okay, so I think the thing is, is like I, I agree with that. I think the part the problem is it's just like I think people have this narrative in their mind, like I'm the pretty girl, I'm the fly dude. And then I think the the other problem is it's just like and I'm going to talk to, I'm going to bring in the panel, but like people haven't told people how to show, like, how are you really showing up? You may, like, old girl thinks she's probably showing up one way. And yeah. She's looking like she thinks, I'm showing up this way because I deserve the man who owns the bus company, not the man who drives the bus, right? Well, and, and her, because she's doing bad math. She's attractive, she's successful, but her personality is like a zero. So if you had to average them all out, yeah, the numbers ain't coming out as high as she thinks they are because your personality matters, your attitude, your energy matters. So if somebody is a happy, well-adjusted person and they go out with you and you got this, you know, I miss thing and, you know, they, they just don't want that. They might knock her off. They'll hang out. They'll deal with it for the night, knock her off. And then it's like, peace. Ah, right, you know. Okay. Pause. Put, hold hey, look, it is what it is. Put a, put, hold, <laughs> you know on, hold, the on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let okay. me bring the panel. Lord have mercy, because me and Whitney will go at this all night long, just the two of us. Come on, panel. Come on. Hi, panel. Look at my fly ass panel. Now, this panel panel does know how to present. So real quick, I'm just going to do a quick roll call. Of course, I have my sister Janice in the corner. I say, hey, Jan. Hey. We have the lovely B. Joy looking like a dad on a movie star tonight. And then new to the panel, another Philly boy. Them Philly boys. I got to watch out. Todd Dumas. Esquire. All right, y'all. So thoughts on uh, me and, and, of course, Whitney. Thoughts on uh, me and Whitney's opening convo did y'all see the ebony k uh video earlier this week hey man i you know not only did i see it i watched the whole clip it's about uh -huh. 20 minutes uh -huh. uh and also she responded to some of the criticism and they talked about it on the breakfast club uh, -huh. uh and i watched that too and she really doubled down and was actually a little disrespectful to Ayanla. But I agree with my boy Whitney on this. I thought that she was harsh. She came off a little rude. She came off very arrogant uh, to put down a whole uh, 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 entire group of people. I just thought that was really, really bad. I, I, I thought it was a, a bad look for Ebony. Mm, mm, mm. Todd, you were shaking your head as well. Well, I, I think the the uh, the undergird of what Whitney was saying is is that um, regardless of how attractive she is or how successful she is, I mean, she's obviously put a lot of effort into making herself um, attractive, physically and attractive on paper. But the the real problem is when you when you are dating a woman like that. You're, you're really subconsciously asking yourself, how is she going to treat me? And, you know, you, 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 you look at the way she treats men overall. Um, and you say to yourself, well, what happens if, you know, I, you know there are hard times for myself? Or where are you going to be? Um, are you going to be by my side? Are you going to, you know, dip out? And so I think women don't understand the subconscious messages that you're sending men of whatever elk you choose or whatever standard you choose. Because what we're really looking at is, particularly men who are, who have are black men who have uh, struggled to get where they are, the number one thing they want is peace. And if you're not bringing well, peace to their household, I don't care what else you're bringing. Okay. All right, all right, all right, peace. I I look, I we've heard this this peace peace and I do believe it is peace. I think the thing is is like I like and I how she responded was completely disrespectful. And I think the other thing is is like I think people don't I always say she doesn't have a good girlfriend to say, "Girl, you got to look in the mirror." 
you got to look and see how are you showing up for the man that you want or the man that you desire. And I think that's it. I think men don't do that. I think men probably do it more than others. But I feel like we don't tell like having the conversation of how to tell someone how they are showing up when they meet someone. And even if I don't even know if they're open to the feedback, but I do want to kind of touch upon that when y'all have experienced somebody telling you how you have shown up and even what has been your feedback or if you've given feedback to someone who has just been like some somebody like an El- Ebony or I don't even, I can't even think of a brother right now, but I don't want to stay on Ebony, but just in that, in that mindset. Um, I have a friend who is, well, I have an ex-friend who is really pretty and exotic looking but she has the worst attitude. And uh, I was trying to give her feedback on why she was being perceived that way. She said she feels like men perceive her as a party girl and nobody takes her seriously. So, you know, when I would gently suggest, well, you know, you are in a bar six or seven nights a week. That might be why you're not being taken seriously. <laughs> well, I like to eat and I like to drink. Like she, she was kind of uh, oblivious to it, I guess. And then I gave her, I remember one day we were going through a drive through line and she was really rude to the lady over the, like she was in the driver's seat. So she was rude to the woman. So we came back out, you know, finished our little transaction or whatever. And I said to her, do you know that you're coming across rudely? And she said, no. So I explained to her how and why. And I said, you know, I use myself as an example. I said, I never, ever want somebody to think I'm rude. So I'm very conscious of how I speak and I'm like overly nice. I'm authentic, but still, I'm really conscious of how I come across because that's not the jacket that I want to carry. You know, I don't want people saying that about me. And so I gave her some examples and she said, you mean you have to do all that thinking, you know, just to Ooh. carry on in life? And, and no, it's not worth that. I'd rather be perceived as rude. So I think some people just don't care. The, the feedback I got from this chick was she really did not care how she was coming across. I guess her her pretty gave her like enough entryway into different rooms that she wrote off that. She's about 43 now. I don't know how much longer she's going to be able to ride off that, you know, realistically speaking, because, you know, beauty fades. But I, no, I, I, go ahead. I, I was done. People that I've met, like, I, I mean, you know, again, we don't want to stay on Ebony, but women who are very attractive, who may have gone through some things in their life. And I, and I, you know, a um, bit of a disclaimer here, I actually do know her personally. And I know she's mm-hmm. revealed that um, she she did not have a, uh, a relationship with her father growing up. Right? I don't I actually don't believe she even knew who her father was uh, growing up, and that that has a psychological uh, traumatizing effect on human beings. So I think we need to take that into it. I think there's an armor that gets built up, and that armor, you know, for black women, is such that they come to the table. Um, expecting to have to sort of fight or or not be treated well um and 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 you know that's that is uh partly if not fully on black men and the way that we have treated black women uh over the generations um but i I do think that we all need to give a little bit more compassion to one another um and and show maybe go below the surface a little bit I, can I jump in on that? I would say that because we spoke briefly about this, but I would say that I don't think that black people in their, I don't know, 30s, 40s, 50s, I don't think they're accepting enough of the fact that it's just hard. Like we were talking earlier in that and said, and she said, you know, women might who do this and that feel like they deserve a certain thing. And I said, I wouldn't use that word because I don't think anybody necessarily deserves anything. Life is complicated. Life is hard. Sometimes you meet somebody, you meet the right person, they turn out to be dope, you have a great time. Sometimes you don't. A lot of it is chance. I mean, the Bible says, you know, time and chance happen us to us all. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, or favor to men of skill, but time and chance happen us to, the, happen us, to us all. Like, you don't know. So, you don't, I can't pray to Jesus and say, I deserve a woman that's five, six and super bad and got a big butt because I like big asses and I, you know, and make this amount of money. I It don't work like that. If you meet that person, then you don't, you won. But if you don't, you just don't. So this thing where I think 
people feel like somebody's owed, somebody owes them something, I think it's part of the problem. If you find it, great. If you don't, you don't find it and maybe you do something different. I don't know, but nobody owes you anything. And a lot of the women that give you that vibe, they give that somebody owes them something energy. And if you start with that, you're already not cool from the gate. Hmm. People don't go out on dates and say, I want to be entertaining. I want to be enjoyable to be around. I want to be somebody who, when I leave the room, the room feels better. The people in the room feel better about themselves having come in contact with me. That's my philosophy. I want to make sure that the people feel better about who they are. People are going in rooms saying, what can I get? What do they owe me? I'm supposed to have this. I'm supposed to have that. And if you have that mindset, you're already on the wrong, you're on the wrong track. So I agree with, I think I, I do believe like people, I think it's layered. I think part of it is your trauma, which, which Todd has kind of touched upon. And then Whitney, I think the other thing is, is like with the trauma, they don't deal with it. So it doesn't develop and it becomes something else. And then it gets projected in their presentation. And then people are talking to people who are like-minded. So the girl with that attitude is talking to another girl with that attitude. Because B. Joy, if you telling the girl, you know, that attitude ain't so cool, she's going to hang out with the other girl who thinks it is. Mm. And so I they get this, they get this echo chamber going, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Now they're going to console each other and tell each other that, that that's what's cool. And it's not. Mm -hmm. Iron sharp yeah. iron and... and, and <laughs> And the other way around, too. right? <laughs> right. You should resign. Don't resign, Todd. I, I think it's. I think it's a continue. The funny thing is, is like, and I do agree with that, Whitney. I, th I think our representation, the goal at this point, should our represent our representative. I think in our twenties, especially in our twenties, and maybe even early thirties, we always had our representative. Possibly had a representative um, based on what do we need to be to get somebody. Has that representative graduated into just who you are at this point as you present? Are we still kind of trying to put on facades to figure it out? I'll let somebody yes. else jump into that one. You said yes, Todd. Yes, I mean, I, but that, 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 that's Whitney's whole point is that we don't come to the table saying, what is my value add? We come to the table trying to get, trying to take from other people. What is your value add to me? We don't come saying, hey, what, what is my value to you? Right? Like we, we we want our presence to be noticed when we're in the room, but we we don't focus on our absence being felt when we're not, which is way more important. Mm. Right? I don't need to walk into a room at this age and figure out whether or not people see me. What I want is when I'm not in the room, do they care that I'm not in the room? Hmm. Hmm. That's true. Janice, I always feel like you walk into a room and people are like, they see first of all, y'all are you and B are stunning. But Jan, I know being your sister, I've always seen people just flock to you. And I don't necessarily I don't I'm not saying that you had a representative or not, but I always feel like there was always a certain presence that was presented. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to think that I'm, I've been authentic. Um, I think I've worked, I, I don't do well faking, faking it. Mm -hmm. And so I do like to bring my authentic self to the table in pretty much every situation that I'm in. I try to do that. Um, but I think that people, you know, people have a, an image of you no matter what you bring to the table, people just have a view of who they think you are. And um, it's amazing because I've had people say to me, it's, and I get different vibes from men and different vibes from women, uh, where women will say, you know, you come off a little arrogant, aloof, um, not friendly. And then on the other hand, I'll have men say, you're very friendly, you smile, and, you know, so, and I don't see myself as two separate people, but it is perceived differently from a man and a woman. Is it because, is it because you may be getting attention that women want? 
I think it, it, it could be, and I have gotten that from some of my closest friends. They have, they've teased me for years, you know, say, Jan, every time you walk in a room, they notice you. Well, okay, I have the gray hair. I've had gray hair most of my life. It does stand out. I do realize that. And, but I mean, I don't know what to do about that. It, it, that's just the way it is. I, I, I present who I am and I really try to be uh, prepared. And the other thing is I, I do like to look good. I like to, I like to dress. I like to, I'm not going to go out and just, you know, not have a little makeup on or have my hair done. I like to look nice. I like to look presentable. I even, I even like to look sexy. And even mm -hmm. at my age, at this age, that's really important to me. So it, it makes, it makes me uh, happy that my husband thinks that I'm attractive. And when we go out and I look a certain way. So I do like to present uh, this, this, the Janice, who I am, but uh, I do want to be authentic about it. I can speak to that specifically. I, because you see that, you've seen that forever. Oh, she thinks she all that. You know who says that? The people who think you're all that. The people who, they feel some kind of way. It's an insecurity within themselves. So they'll look at a good looking person, because men and women do it. They'll look at a woman that's really attractive, think she's out of their league, and they'll go, oh, she doesn't look approachable. No, you're just a chump and you're scared to holler. <laughs> like people have their own <laughs> crap. You know, because I mean, I've known Janice for a long time. Janice is beautiful, always looks amazing, dresses well. You do, you look super fine, you're super bad, and everybody knows it. And <laughs> but you're nice and you're friendly to people. So anybody saying that is full of shit. They have their own issues with I don't think I can pull her, I don't think I can carry it. Oh, she getting all the attention from men, I'm not getting it. People have all these issues that they're bringing to the situation and they want to put it on you. That's all that is. Because women will say, oh, she thinks she all that. Nine times out of 10, it's a not as attractive girl saying it about a real attractive girl. Oh, she thinks she all that. Yeah, because she kind of is and we all think she's all that and you do too. That's why you're saying it. Shut up and go sit down somewhere. God <laughs> have mercy. I mean, just come on. Like, come on. She Courtney, yeah, welcome I'm to the gonna mic. meet Janice and not think she's not a beautiful woman. No, she she's always super fly. The clothes are always super fly. It is what it is. It Appreciate is. it. Don't be mad about it. It is. And it that's is. on you if you're mad about it. Because <laughs> she was being nice to people. You was in your bag. Right, right, right. I, I mean, yes, people are projecting their insecurities because Janice was. And I think people just project insecurities period, because people are fly. I think there are certain people that have, I mean, I do believe like there are people that want to represent a certain way and do, and I always say show up as your best self. My sister, I, the one thing I think Janice has definitely shown me is show up the best, just about how she presents. But can um, I ask you a question? Can I ask the men a question though? And going with something that Whitney said, do you think that it's really the beauty or is it the confidence that women present that can be a little intimidating to other women? You know, some women just kind of stand back. They don't smile. They're just, you know, they're, they, they don't even, sh they don't want, even want to show their friendly or their kindness out loud. And I'm just wondering, is it is it is it more of the confidence that people that people are intimidated by and not necessarily the, the pretty? Hey, I mean, confidence plays a major role because there'll there'll be women who aren't as attractive but are out there and you know vocal and having a good time and being themselves. I think it just it's kind of like who are you and what do you bring into the world? And if you're not comfortable with it, you you're treating yourself as a second class. Whatever you're, you know, you're not willing to put yourself out there. So you're uncomfortable with the person that is. It's all that stuff. And some of it does come from if you weren't as attractive, you never built up that confidence. And so it, they kind of work hand in hand. So that's back to that thing where things are really complicated. But I mean, I always say it's on them. Like you don't owe anybody something for them feeling their shortcomings. Hmm. Somebody owes you that. That's on you. I mean, I, th I think I have been there. I've been in, I think people have had friendships where not always the cutest girl always gets picked. 
because their personality is the dopest. Like, and they can't understand why. And I, or, or the dopest guy, the, the guy with the biggest personality, the dude may have, he may have all these things, but they, he's always getting the chicks. And I, I always, and I was just like, people really don't understand. I think people really believe like my physical presence should outshine your actual personality. Well, that's people who've never developed one. <laughs> like we talked about that briefly earlier, like. For a lot of years, I worked in sales. I still work in sales. And one of the things when you work in sales and corporate sales is you're always trying to develop your ability to, I won't say manipulate, but persuade people to do one thing or another. And because you're working on it, you look at things like trends and what do people respond to today differently than they did yesterday? What are buzzwords that people you know, have some interaction with that they'll want to go one way or another? And when I talk about that, what I'm relating that to is personality. People have the same personality approach to the world that they did when they were 17. If you, you know, work in some field, like I mentioned in that, if you work in software, you might have started off coding in a software that was popular 20 years ago, but what they're using now may be a lot different. So you had to learn that software. People are learning different things along the way, but they're not, what they're not, and they're working on it. But what they're not working on is their personality. You're not working on you and how people perceive you and your energy and you're not saying to you're not reflecting that you know I was cool when I was 20 but now I had a few rough things happen in my 30s now I'm in my 40s and now I'm bitter and you're not recognizing and self-reflecting and saying maybe I should be more friendly maybe I should be more open and I think that unfortunately and I'm gonna say it openly I don't think a lot of sisters black women are looking at themselves and saying what is my deal because I think black women uniquely have an echo chamber right now, at least for the last, I don't know, say 10 years of the black girl magic. Yeah, we doing it. Yeah, like, yeah and, you know, and, they, and, they all, and, and because they cheerleading each other, nobody's saying time out. You're not winning because of that. You're not winning because you're nasty or you're not friendly or you outside with a bonnet on your head. Like nobody's saying you doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing and you turning people off and you want it did not matter. You wanted to not matter that you on there with Yana Van saying looking nasty as you can be and wondering why dudes don't want to hang out with you. Like really? At, yes, yes. I mean, look, I, and I, the reason why I brought her on because I feel like B Joy has like a five star personality. And B Joy, oh, I know you are you girl. You do, you do, you do, you really. Sweet, thank you. You got you got swag, girl. But I always <laughs> say like what. Because as as some somebody who is your age, I know you're in your 40s and you are newly single. What are some of the things that you have been kind of or newly whatever? What are some of the things that you as as, as a woman of, of this age have been seeing from just how you have engaged with people, but also how what you have seen just in your spaces? You know, I am not engaging with people, so <laughs> not engaging with people. Yeah, not not in that way. I'm really trying to just be solid before I even open myself up to anything. Okay, you know? but even in the past, how have you just worked on yourself? Oh, okay. Well, I re well currently, I'll just say what I'm doing right now. I'm doing like a 30 day detox. It's my first time trying that. I'm always trying something. I always want to be the best version of me internally, mm -hmm. externally a little bit more so internally. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm the one that's got to live with me. So I want to be, you know, I want to be, I want to present myself in a really nice way to the world. So I'm reading a book called Setting Boundaries and Finding Peace. I have a little pamphlet that's like a emotional intelligence test and uh, you know, grooming you to improve your emotional intelligence. And what's the third thing? I'm in a journal that like prompts you to write different things about your sleep and your exercise. And so I'm doing that and I'm fasting from social media. I'm fasting from Dr. Peppers because it's my favorite thing. I just yeah. pick some things that I like and I'm purposely giving them up to remind me when I want to reach for a soda. Hey, I'm, I'm on something right now. I'm on something different just to keep me conscious, you know, and so hopefully, you go ahead. Finish. Seeking mental clarity. That's all I'm seeking. I'm not trying to lose any weight or gain any, you know, clear skin. I just want to be like more mentally clear and think more clearly, watch my approach to the world. So that's one thing I'm doing right now. 
but just in life, I read a lot. I read a lot of articles. I read the news all day. Um, so, B. Joy, I have a question. If you did yeah. meet, let's say you were, I know you're in Memphis and you ain't yeah. catching the bus no time soon, but you did meet the bus driver and he came okay. up to you. What would be your engagement with him? Hypothetically. Did I meet him on the bus or did I meet him at the car? Well, you may have met him on the bus. <laughs> Shit, who knows? Um, so I'm not opposed to anybody in their profession. What I will say is that I think it's important for a man at my age, I'm 40. I was about to say 49. I'm 48. Don't let me give myself a year. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that a man likes what he does and enjoys what he does. Because if he's feel stagnant or frustrated about where he is in life, then I think that'll bleed over into us. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if I'm not really looking for anybody younger than me. So if I'm dating somebody my age or around my age, hopefully by then he's found his niche or is on the verge of finding it or looking for it or aggressively seeking it, you know, like, so if that's bus driving and he's happy and content and he can take care of himself and, you know, we can go out to eat sometimes. If he had a hell of a personality, then yeah, you know, um, I think it would initially, it would probably strike me as um, he his lifestyle might be different than mine. And I don't mean financially. I mean more so like I like to read. I like history. Like if he struck me as the kind of person that liked the things I like, then I could, I could go there with him. But he would have to really impress me with all that. And it probably wouldn't just be asking for my number on the bus. I would think that was a little unprofessional, to be honest. But if I met him in a different setting and it came out that that's just what he did, I probably would be open to it. I certainly would not be open because of how much money he made. It wouldn't be about the money. It would be more about, is he happy with himself and what he's doing? Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, I think that's the question is like, how do you show up winning? Like folks who, I, I see a lot of people, they're boring. They're just outright boring like they're not interesting they're constantly talking about you're like what they're like dropping they're dropping word they're dropping things to just impress people so how do you start to how first of all how do you just let them know like yo you're tired like or, or even friends i'm just like why do you always pontificate and it's not interesting because i got a lot of brothers who are constantly pontificating and they ain't saying shit <laughs> A lot of people like to hear themselves talk. And so, you know, they're so used to it that they think it sounds good. They know their own voice. I don't know. People need better friends because <laughs> people out here, not impressive. And you're right. It happens on both sides, male and female. The thing that I, the thing I wish was different in the whole male, female dating thing. I wish the money thing was different. Because what I hate about the how much does a man make? What does he bring to the table? Now, I've been fortunate. So I'm fortunate that, you know, I've had successes and, you know, I can say that I meet a lot of these criteria that they they want. But if I didn't, I would be mad about it because I would say we live in America where black men are the most hated group in the world. They hate us. They're happy to break up our families by creating distance between men and women. So it's almost like the very thing that the system is using to put us down is the thing that a lot of our women now are relating to in a way that they're leaning into it. If they want brothers to be less than successful and they don't want to hire brothers in these different areas, I think black men make 70 cents on the dollar of other men in America. 77 cents and they want it that way and you know that they want it that way but then you use that same criteria to judge your men that's not good it's like if black men took something that white america said about sisters and said i'm gonna use that to put you down that would not be cool mm. and so i hate that i hate that money thing because they're not hiring brothers in the C-suites like they're hiring white guys. They like hiring black women more than they like hiring black men because they want to emasculate black men. Like people forget the original sin of black men was the black buck, right? I think that's why they play up the femininity of men so bad now on TV. They love to feminize black men because they take the thing they feared the most, right? This big, black, powerful buck. And they want to 
feminize, make him a punk, make him a bitch, right? That's one way to do it. Another way to emasculate him is to take the money out of his pocket and tell his women that your man don't have no money. Well, uh -uh. Uh -uh. I can't. Okay. Is that, is that he got my back on that? I said, to you. I said wait a minute. I, but I want to bring this back, Whitney, because the funny thing is, it's just like, yes, you are right. I think the emasculation and the money issue go hand in hand. But I think about like Todd, right? When I, I'm sure women. I'm not going to Todd. For example, they see Esquire, they see whatever, both you and Whitney are very clean cut. They see such and such. Whitney, I know, is, is not available. And Todd, I'm not going to put your status out there. But I just, <laughs> I think the thing is, it's like the assumption is like, ooh, if I had some girlfriends, I would be like, ooh, he's an Esquire. Natalie, how old is he? Who is he? Such and such. Hook it up. And I'll be like, okay, fine. What does he do? I think, again, in our mind, we're like, we do... I think we have been raised to think around security. No, like even yeah. though we may have our own security, we also want someone who is secure. Is there something wrong with that? I, I do not think so. Um, one, I, I think black men need to understand that security is the first priority of a woman, period. Any woman, white, black, whatever else you are. But, um, particularly in this society, black women need security first. I was married for six years. I didn't understand that. I had all these accoutrements. I, I, I focused on the paper. I focused on having these other uh, attributes that would attract women to me. But I, like Whitney says, I didn't, I didn't focus on being and showing up for myself, right? I didn't focus on making sure I could be a good partner for my wife. So I wasn't. And, and, and that's that's a thing that I think we're missing in this entire conversation. Like, how do you show up to be a good partner? Forget it, but fine. With, yes, everybody wants the person who's educated. Everybody wants the person who's successful. Everybody wants the security of, uh, you know, e economic security. But how do you, within all that, show up to be a good person and a good partner? And until you learn that, I'm telling you at plus 40, you're going to be single, period. I'm going to shit with you. You're going to well, end up having well, a series of relationships. And, real and quick, and I would say the ladies jump in on this. One of the things I think is funny about money is if you've made any money, like a lot of people maybe on this panel have, and you know, there's people listening, I'm sure have made money. You can meet somebody who makes 70 grand but lives a under control lifestyle who has more disposable income than a dude making 200 but got mad bills leverage to the hill and it's focused. like there are people focused. like that there are people who people don't realize as you make more money you spend more money so my bills are not going to be the same as somebody who makes fifty thousand sixty thousand eighty thousand dollars my bills reflect the money i make i don't just have all this extra money because i you're gonna have a bigger house you're gonna have a nicer car you're gonna have this you're gonna have other things that you pay for you're, you can't right, be it's relative you, right. you. it is and so that's why people have grandmothers who put their parents through college who, who made 30 grand like it's, i think people they look at people don't know money a lot of people who never made any money can tell you i need a man to make six figures i'm like well what does that mean six figures is relative where do you live if you make six figures in san francisco you hurting if you make six figures and you live in Manhattan, that ain't the same as if you make six figures and you live in Biloxi. Like right. it, so many things come into play when it comes to money that I wish that people didn't use that. But as money, the but money, but money feeds the narrative to the pre presentation, right? Money is the funder of the presentation. I think from cars to houses. I, 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 to I, 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 well, I think it depends I don't, I just, I don't know what I your, your point about security. What is your definition of security? Is your definition of security financial security? Is your definition of security coming home to somebody who makes you feel safe? Is your right. definition of security emotional security? Like there, there, are, there are a myriad of ways you can feel secure, right? And I can make you feel secure economically, and then I can make you feel terrorized emotionally. Right. What right. would you rather have? Right. 
Right. But I'm saying all I'm saying, Janice, I'm not saying all money, but I'm saying a lot of what what I have seen when I think of men and women, when they're like Todd was saying, the money helps the narrative of the presentation. But Janice, you were saying you disagree. Go ahead. No, I'm just I was with someone, you know, you know, on a personal note for a very, very long time who made a lot of money. We both made a lot of money, but was not willing to share that money. Uh, you know, wasn't going to buy a nice car. Not that I needed a nice car or he needed a nice car. He wore cheap clothes, cheap shoes, cheap car, didn't want to live in a nice place, didn't care where you lived. It was a shack, didn't care if the place, and made a lot of money in a, you know, a very prominent position. So it's really, I wish, you know, in that presentation now that you say that we bring to the table. I wish that the money part, especially for women, that that wasn't the focus. I think that's what's getting us in trouble. You know, I, you know, I, I've, I've, I've had a, a wonderful career, professional life. I've met a lot of professional men, married professional men. Now I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm married to a police officer. I mean, I'm chief marketing officer of a very large health system. You know you know, prominent, you know, well-known across Michigan. And I married a police officer and, you know, people looked at me at first, like I was crazy, but guess what? He made me happy. He made me laugh. He made me smile. Would do anything for me. Go out of his way. But can I ask a question? I have more fun. Can I ask a question, Jess? Mm -hmm. I know you said you had to make a mental shift to even consider him, right? Well, let me, let me, in a way, in, in a, when I met Dean, I did not know what he did. Okay. I didn't know anything about him. I, I didn't know what his profession was. And he, and he was, t- he was retired. He was already retired when I met mm-hmm. him. But it, at that point, it really didn't make any, he had, he had kind of wooed me because, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, the profession didn't make any difference at that point. I didn't really care. I, I, it was about how he treated me. He presented very fly, though. Well, that's yes. He, flat. he presented fly. I'll make this point. Here's, here's, here's an interesting one for y'all. Wait a minute. But on the flip side of that, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But on the flip side of that, again, remember I said I was with somebody for a long period of time, married to them. And they weren't fly. They weren't. They weren't fly at all. You're right. You know. Right. Sorry. Well, and, but to what Janice was just saying, something I've always found interesting is men, here's the funny thing. Men could meet a woman on fries. She works fries, okay? She on the grill. And if she's <laughs> super bad and she a lot of fun, they're going to scoop her up. And she's right so, yeah, she's yes, right yeah, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. They will move. Like, they will the girl. Wait a minute. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Finish. I was going to say, they would tell the girl that's making a boatload of money who thinks she's the coolest thing in the room, excuse me, sis, I'm trying to holler at my girl who work at Mickey D's because she's nice and she's beautiful. And I'm cool with that because I make money. I find it interesting that women who, like this Ebony chick, who, if you're successful and you're making money, why aren't you comfortable saying if he does make less than I make because if I make a good amount of money, I'm already comfortable. He makes me happy, so I don't need him to make X, Y, and Z. I don't get that part. Like, my perfect example, my wife makes a lot. My wife is like Janice, super sharp, and makes a lot. She makes more than I do, and I never cared. It never bothered me, and it never mattered to her. Because, I mean, I do well, so it's relative. But she makes more than I do. And she never gave a shit. It was like money was never even a thing because we, well, we could do anything we wanted and go wherever we wanted. But she was the kind of person that she didn't have a, you have to make X, Y, and Z. Now, I still would have been cool because, you know, I was doing pretty well when we met and, and have been fortunate. But she didn't need it. Just like I like Janice saying he didn't have to be because Janice is dope. And if the Lord has blessed you with something, what's the problem with you being a woman and a guy being blessed by what you bring to the table 
rather than the other way around. It's almost like something wrong with that. I don't get that. Okay, can, I, can, I, can I ask a question? Though? Wait, wait. I wanted Todd to finish his point before we go into it. Yes. Go ahead, Todd. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, 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 my point okay. is finished. I, I, okay. I, Go ahead, I agree with. I agree with. with you, but please, Janice. Please. Do you think that's also about the if we it it helps to validate women if we say it's important for us to say we have a, a boyfriend or a husband who is has this no. type of career. It's part of the this, couple presentation. It's it's, yeah. it's a part of that. That it's all but, about. It goes back to what you say, what we present. We want to present that image that, oh, Janice that is married to, you know, Dr. So-and-so. And that automatically in people's mind, oh, Janice is really banging because she married to Dr. Janice, so Janice, did you? How many people I know, as long as you I know that are married to Dr. And you as, so-and-so and you as, are and miserable, you miserable as they present hell. well. They're miserable, but they present You're well. You're miserable as hell. The right. right. There's a what lot of that? people that the is Joneses. Is that living? Need is, that, is, that, is that thriving? But I think the funny what is, what is thing the is, is like, I think I would, people. I would, I would turn that yeah, question back on bad. women, and I would ask you women. I'm sorry. I would I would ask women. But I would turn that question back on on you women and ask you, what does that give you? Like, so if you are miserable, married to that so and so, behind the curtain, what does the production give you? You don't want to be miserable married to Dr. So-and-so. You want to be happy married to him. You want to be happy I, married I, I, to I, I, the police I, I, officer, I, I, to whomever, you know, to whomever you choose. You don't, you don't seek that. You don't seek out anyone with the aspiration of being miserable. Now, if you end up there, I'm you can end up there. I'm not talking about, about, talking about your aspirations. I'm talking about when you're in the marriage, right? And you, mm-hmm. and you decide, I'm going to stay in this marriage because of the production that I'm giving, you know, the outside world. I'm gonna stay here, but behind the scenes, I'm sort of miserable because I get the accoutrements that you're talking about, that that Jan was talking about, about how it sort of validates me as a woman because I'm married to Dr. So and so. That's the point I'm trying to. I, I I don't. That's the sort of I guess uh, cognitive cognitive dissonance I don't understand about women in general, especially black women. Right. I think one is, go ahead. I, I thought BJ, I was gonna let you finish answering. No, I, I didn't have I can't answer that question. I, I, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I from what I've seen, I think the thing is is just like I think it's like women love powerful men. And they and to be on the arm of somebody who is supposedly based on society standards as winning, they want that but they don't understand what they could possibly you know in date in dating somebody and i'm not saying this is all men but trying to find a balanced individual i think is very difficult i think it's difficult even even if you are the most balanced to keep yourself balanced in that space but but i think we we have been taught especially i guess women of my generation you're supposed you're supposed to marry at least your equal he should be making just as much or more than you, or he should be able to such and such with you. So you're going to have to, if you want that type of man, you have to present this type of way. But you know what, Natalie, you know what my question is to women? How's that working for you? Because yeah. if you, if you, if you think about it, and again, you need to watch the whole clip with Ebony, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Ayala gave her so many good jewels. And I don't mm-hmm. think she got it. But Ebony said kind of sarcastically to Ayanla, well, I've dated all these different men. I've dated this one. I've dated this one. I've dated this one. She said that. Okay. And I'm sure that selection, that pool of men that she says she has dated have been yeah. this, that thing that she, mm-hmm. that, that type of man. Mm-hmm. Well, my question I'm, is the Dr. Phil question. Well, how's that working for you? How's that working for you? Okay. Maybe you, girl, maybe you need to try that bus driver. Who doesn't own that bus? You know, I mean, if if you've done, he got a pension, things, girl. Oh, huh? I said he got a pension. Yeah, I mean, but you, but you want all these other men, but that's not working for you. So something's not right here, you know. So I'm just saying, just I think she just needs to open up. I think women, we need to be a little broader in our. I agree. I think we do need to. Open How about up you find out what his financial? Maybe maybe his maybe that bus driver's financial understanding is better. Than the guy who was in a Ponzi scheme at, on Wall Street, right? Like you don't know. 
So might maybe find out. Well, there's a whole situation before you prejudge him. Or have him get to know a person first and then talk about what to do. Exactly my point. Well, I think so. For example, we have, and she's she's in the chat. I'm not going to call her, but like there are certain, I like there are some women on uh, that have been on the show that you know that's the first thing they ask. What do you do? What do you you know? What what everyone asks. Huh? That's what everyone asks. What What do you do? Yeah. That's a first question. Drive. Right. They, don't like, they, don't they don't ask me what my hobbies are. They don't ask me where I'm from. They don't ask me. They don't ask me what my mama's name is. They ask me what I do. Period. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. Every and maybe maybe Whitney has a different, you know, because I would. No, I feel you. I feel you. Know, you. I don't know, think I'm tied to you. Present that, right, that. right? But I can't. And so, like, I I get. I understand why women ask that question because it goes back to your point about security, mm-hmm. right? And am I dating a person up front that might provide me with the security I need? I'm not mad at that. That that doesn't make us angry. It doesn't make Whitney angry. It doesn't make any of us angry. So what, what makes us angry? angry makes, what well, is, is the thing I think is funny. Is when I tell you what I do, right? And it may not meet up with your expectations when you haven't even asked to see my balance sheet. <laughs> my balance sheet might be better than all, all the other cats you ever met. What I think is funny is I think there's this be careful what you wish for thing out there. There's a lot of guys, especially guys who lead with money, who are the kind of guy you don't want to be with because it, they're leading with money because they can't lead with personality and they can't lead with charisma. So they lead with money. And then what happens is you get the lifestyle and then he's like controlling. Then he's don't go out. Don't wear that. Where are you going? Where were you last night? We, what girlfriend are you hanging out with them controlling dudes? Cause a lot of them real, that's why you see a lot of these professional athletes in domestics. Cause they got control issues. It's I'm paying for everything. So I low key own you, and whatever I tell you to do, you do. And the moment they're stepping out of line, they ready to tap their ass. And so it's one of those things where people who don't necessarily know how money works, there's a lot of guys, because white men are real bad with this, who have worked super hard, working 70, 80, 90 hours a week, providing for their families, and the wife is at home smashing the mailman. That's real because he's at home. <laughs> I need the church music. Stop. I wonder what that was. Because he's not funny. around. The kids don't like him. They barely respect him. They talk to him like he's trash because he's not there, but he's making a boatload of money providing for the family. And so people have to be careful what they're asking for. And a lot of times people are asking for something that they have no relationship with. If you grew up in a household that was a, I don't know, the household income was $35,000. And then you did whatever you did and now you're 30 and you're out in the world and you're like, oh, I want a man that does X, Y, and Z. You've never been with a man that does that. You don't even know what that's like. You might like it. You might hate it. Why is that the, the barometer? That's not good. I, I just hate that. I mean, if you know that the median black household income in the United States of America is $48,000. And you out here saying you want this guy to be all of this and make all of this money. Who are you relating to? What group of people are you relating to? I'm not suggesting women shouldn't want guys who are successful and attractive and winning and whatever. But to say that's the only thing that you would possibly entertain is unrealistic. Because there's too many women. It's It's nowhere near enough of those men to match the amount of women you lost before you left the house. So let's let's bring it back. No, and I I agree because I want I don't want this. A part of it is money, but I think part of it is the illusion of what we see, right? Because I think the thing is, it's just like there are a lot of assumptions that people make, like for example, based on how we present. And so, what are some of the assumptions that you just see outright? that your friends or you have made in the past or you know people are currently just making based on how people are presenting or bring it what they're bringing 
so so called bringing to the table or somebody that they meet. Was that anybody want to jump in? Yeah, anybody? No. Well, I, would, I mean, go ahead, Todd. Go ahead. Well, I, well, I, I will say this: that, that social media has exacerbated that infinitely more than when we when I grew up, right? When I grew up, you had a certain understanding. Uh, women grew up with all black women grew up with princesses and they wanted the white knight right and they wanted you know the brother that's going to come and, and sweep you off feet and make you feel secure and that's where that sort of security comes from and you, and to your point about like people not knowing what the median income was they might not know what it is but they felt it because they grew up with it right and so you want that you you you, you grow up wanting um that other. Um, but I think now what happens is there's so much of this, this proliferation of everyone living well and everyone having this aspirational life and people getting these quick likes and 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 quick and and so now you you have an entire maybe two generations. I don't I don't really how many generations I'm behind, but there's a lot of generations that are growing up with this social media understanding that that's what they want and that's the only thing they want. And that's their, that's their first priority. That's the, that's, forget who the person is. Forget who they're going to be to me. Forget how they're going to treat me. What are they going to do for me? And that is, that's what you got now. Like, all right, so the word says the love of money is the root of all evil, not money, but the love of money, right? Why does it say that? Because if you're chasing money, you're missing a lot. You're not, there are things that you're willing to do that you shouldn't do. You, you know, you're compromised. And so if the word is telling you that, why are we then remixing it into, nah, he got to make six figures? Like, we're doing a disservice to ourselves. And no one's saying that. It's the wrong approach. It's not a, oh, that's how you feel. That's how she feels. No, it's the wrong approach. Because if you're putting that first, you're, like I said earlier, you're not even allowing for the fact that you might meet a guy in position A, right about to make the turn to something bigger, but your motivation and your presence might help him make that turn. Because guys have done that for women. Guys who've made been real successful have helped women become real successful. And they didn't approach it like, I can't do that, or she needed to already be making X, Y for me to kick it with her. Women are saying that, and why are you saying that? I hate that. I literally hate that. Because I, there are so many brothers out there being discounted because they don't make what sir. But I think women. there are a lot of sisters being discounted also because they don't look a certain way, too. Well, that may be true, but Looks are looks. I, it is what it is. You know what it I mean? It is what it is. It I'm is. Ways you might be. You you look like you I mean, it is. I can't help look, you. It ain't. There's a difference between. My, I can't help my Philly brother on that one. <laughs> no, I'm not. Go ahead, be joy. We, we so, I was just going to say both are superficial ways of excluding people from the dating pool. It might be the. Hottest, it may be the dopest chick on the inside with the best ill nana with the best mind that can really elevate you wrapped in a body that you wouldn't notice, you know. So it's the same with men, like we both got to get away from the superficial. I think, I think it's well, I, I'll i say this I don't think looks are looks are deeper than superficial. Looks are looks are, is an interesting thing because looks affect people's occupations. If you notice, like looks play a role in all kinds of things because i think they also help people build confidence because what you'll notice is there are a lot of really attractive people who are really successful because something happened throughout their lives because they were attractive it's a weird dynamic but i'm not i mean i'm not hanging out with a chick that looked like she played for the eagles i'm not doing it it just uh -huh. it's not i'm well, not doing i think it. that's the equivalent of saying i'm not dating the bus driver that's the male that's version of that's, 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 like, that's just natural selection what, what, what we're saying is that 
you ain't like, like BJ, you're not needing a dude that's five two, are you? You're not going out with a dude that's five two. So, wait, we have some issues. Before we, before we jump in, before we jump in, hold on. Is intrinsically beautiful, right? Like, she's intrinsically beautiful. If she Who? didn't do, Jan, she's intrinsically beautiful. Like, right. If she grew, if, if you saw her without anything, she said she loves to wear makeup, she loves to get dressed and all that. But if she got up in the morning, you'd be like, oh, she's a beautiful black woman, right? Mm -hmm. However, she shows up for herself, both internally and externally. Right. I think that's what we're talking about in terms of beauty. We want a woman. Okay, so wait, we have her. we have some images. We have some images, and I'm gonna have Montaigne show. And I just want to, I, well, how do they how do they present? <laughs> and, how it works with this? Yes, y'all are gonna do this. How do they present? And I want you to be honest. How do they present? What um, is what are they telling you? And what makes them dateable or undateable? Let's go, go Montaigne. First, let's do Lady in Pink. Are we just doing women? No, we're doing men too. Okay. okay. All right. What do y'all think? Gentlemen. She's cute and fly. Oh, gentlemen. I like her. I like thick women. Yeah, I, do. I, I think she's got she's got a, a, a presence and um and a style to her. Is she what is she is she dateable? Yeah, very much yeah. so. Okay. All right. All right. All right. How is she presenting? What is what is her what is her energy giving you? She's, she has her own sort of sense of self. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Yeah. Okay. She has, right. a presence. she has a presence. All right. Brother in green. Ladies. <laughs> wow, <laughs> man. <Nat>. Really? <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. I can't, Natalie. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. It's the right. car virus for me. <laughs> what, is, what, what do you it's mean, B-Joy? Wait a minute. My, it's my the Converse for me. I like Converse, but I don't know. Okay. He looks like a, a like a b-boy around the way kid. Like he looks young. You know, does he own the bus or does he does he drive? <laughs> is he the, does he drive the bus? He got a, he got a, a oh, B -Joy, wait, wait, B Joy, would you date him? No, he looks too young. It's not what he's wearing. He just looks too young. And yeah, okay, he, he looks real immature. Okay, right. Like he doesn't present like a grown man to me. All right, all right. Lady. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, would you date him when you were 20, 20, 30, 24 no, to 30? No. He said, no, I would have never dated him. No, <laughs> that's not that, that, that's the question. I said, does he own a gun shop or just shop there? That's funny. <laughs> Untrained, untrained, um, church lady, church girl. Yeah, she's cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she's sophisticated. She's sophisticated. Yeah. I wouldn't, I ain't going that far. I'm just saying she's decent looking. Okay. Is she, like what does she present? How would, what, what do you, what, what are you expecting on the date? How does she present? I mean, I always expected the same thing on the date, but. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, think she's. I don't know if I, yeah, I would agree. She, that. She, I, don't, I don't know if she, I expect different things from women on a date, but I, okay. what I would say is that uh, that she has a as as the other woman, she has her own style, right? And that is attractive. Okay. Like she's okay. got her her own her own voice and her own style. That's attractive, just like the other person I think was attractive. That's what you're getting. Would you ask yeah. her out, Todd? Where if I saw her somewhere mm -hmm. and I talked to her, would you t would you ask? Yes, would you talk to her or ask her out? You're at, but you're asking me an abstract question. Well, am, am I talking to her? Yeah, this is a damn question. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna answer for Todd. Yeah, she's yeah. cute. Dudes yeah. will go out with her. Okay, let's go. Now, um, brother, in I think I don't know what I called him. Uh, uh, in white. Uh, that's funny, Janice. Mm, yeah, mm, yes. Why you? Why are you hesitant? Yeah, I, I. Yes. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm. Yes. Yes. It's just a yes. That's all you got to say. Yeah. That's it's all. Like Idris Abba, <laughs> with, with he like, he uh, like a knockoff Idris. We're yeah, yeah, like uh, okay. uh, Actually, I think it is. I think the soda pads are fucking around. 
Is okay. it Idris? It looked like Idris, it but I'm not sure. It, it, it does. It does. It, 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 Joy. The watch and the shades throwing me off. Like it, it, I want to see your eyes. You know, if it ain't bright sunny outside, you're trying to be too fly, and the watch is a little flashy. You look like you're doing too much. I think that might be Idris. It is interesting. It is. Okay. If he in a movie, like you in a role, okay. But yeah, Idris is a sexy brother. Yeah, but but they, not they just like way too much. <laughs> he's, he's an uh -huh. Idris uh -huh. Lady <laughs> in black. Lady in black. Ooh. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> Who says it? Did Whitney say that? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, all brothers is going out with her. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, you're. you're that, that's probably. A good, are y'all taking her? Are y'all taking her seriously? That's, that's a good. That, that's a we good. Out, we that's taking a, her out and hoping for the best. The question, the question <laughs> you're asking is, is that long term? Is that short term yeah. or long term? Long term or short. Long term or short term. I'm asking. It depends on how cool she is. It's long term if she cool as a fan. It's <laughs> short term if she, and if she's okay. All right. All right. And they said her lips look fake. I can't. Um, lady in green. <laughs> she, I, I know this good looking woman. Okay. Yeah, dude's going out with her in a minute. Going out with her. Ty. I think you're of a certain age. Yes. Okay. If you're of a certain age, you know what, Ty. I'm going to get you. And then. I forgot the last guy. There you go. <laughs> you are really funny. So you know yes. what, bro? I actually might want to hear what he got to say. You know, know what? I'm you know what? First of all, I'm, no, we're both in Philly. We're both in Philly, and this dude just won us game one. So no, every I mean, every chick, every chick on the earth is going earth out with him. Out with him. Exactly. He done made about two hundred and fifty million. So but yeah, they all going out with him. You. I'm saying if I met him on the street and I verified that he wasn't homeless and he was dressed like that <laughs> on purpose because he that was his style, like he looked like he might have some interesting conversations. Like conversation. Well, he's wearing that on purpose because that's, that's the right. NBA walk in in the uh, tunnel. That's so they, they wilding out now on purpose. Right. This, the NBA walk in is the new runway. Look they doing that. that on purpose now, though. They wearing wild shit on purpose. Can you please tell them that James Harden. And, and, and James, the, right, and James Harden then had them all. He didn't hit yeah, all of them. Right, so yeah, he, he, he was in Vegas before game. He's been there That's and cool. done it. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, hilarious. There are days I was like, you know what? Forget this life. Let me be James Harden. Oh, you know what I would throw out here, Nat, with the grown okay. folks on this, Go and ahead. I would throw this out there for women. I think the size thing is interesting. What, I think like that short. No, I'm talking about women, weight, okay. dress size, all of that. Where are you going with this? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. This is me showing some love to women. I think that the size thing is so out of <laughs> sync with what guys actually like. Like, I would say through most of my, from college to in my forties, I loved women that were like a minimum 10, 12. 14, mad body, right? Bodied up. Body and Lizzo are two different things. Yeah, no, Lizzo, Lizzo, no, Lizzo is something else. Now, I, now I don't want to. Because we're both. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. So what, I'm, what I was going to say Philly is. Jones. And Philly Jones have a body. They're, they they are, they are, I think both, most black so men. They said, be like, nice, Todd. No, no, no. This is, this is nice. Okay. This is this is about the beautiful black woman body. Like most black women like a little bit of something. Right? I right. I just want women to not dwell on or judge themselves by their size. Cause right. like having dated a lot of women that were a 12, 14. John J A W N. Right. Right. Not Jordan. I'm mad they put that up there. He's he going, <laughs> he going to hell first for that. Why are you gonna put Jill on glass like that? Not doing really. but but what I would say is I, I wish that women gave themselves a break. You don't need to be a two or four or six or eight or ten. You can go out and the chick that's a 16 is getting more action than the chick that's a six. 
I'm just saying I would so, I want women to not be so hard on themselves. I don't you know what you know what Whitney, I wish I could agree with you, but based on what we've been here it's not that hasn't always been true lately, especially at this age. It's like we you want them fit, you want them tight still cuz we're getting older. And, oh, I, I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. And you know, a lot of uh, the code word that a lot of men are using and a lot of sisters are really, I think that's why we're having all these BB, BBL, you know, all this stuff. They want the tiny waist, the big boobs or whatever. I even have grown women who were like, I want a Serena butt. I was like, girl, you got sticks for legs. It's gonna but, grown, but grown ass men don't care about stretch marks. They don't care oh, about yeah. you know, foop eyes, if you want to call it. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> Grown men right. don't care about that stuff like women think. I don't know. Wait, like, 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 I think that a lot of dudes don't judge women as harshly as women judge themselves. And I would just say that I would like to put that out there to women is don't be so judgmental of yourself. You know what I mean? Like, let that go. You don't need to be a sick. Have more compassion for yourself. And the more, like, the more you look in the mirror and you're like, yo, I look good. And that energy comes across to us. Right. Like, man, I like that. I like. Somebody that. said, "I'm keeping I my feet." I like. Y'all like don't know. It's I'm, not, I'm not saying be little oh, and be like a bowling ball and act like you're the hottest thing in the room. I yeah. She can mix in a salad, but I'm just. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. I'm that, going to hell for this, ain't I? But I I'm just saying that I would like women to get themselves a break. I would. I would. Ask, I would ask Whitney since he's the only male in this on this uh, panel, but of all your boys, mm -hmm. have they ever married the finest chick they've ever dated? I did. Well, okay. You're, you're, <laughs> for me, you're an aberration. James' is husband did. I husband did. I came back and like, no, that's not what I want. What I really want is a real woman. Is a woman that like oh, really? I can actually go away. Well, like, all right. Like, so I, I'm I'm disagreeing with your premise. Your premise is that the finest woman you ever dated can't also be the coolest, because I think that's what Janice's husband right. thinks. And yeah, that's what exactly. I think about exactly. my, my wife is super attractive, but also super cool. So yeah, I think you can right. get that. I I think you exactly. gotta be really fortunate to get that, but yeah, you can get that. Assuming you, did you met when you got married, was she the finest woman you had dated as of then? No. Yeah. Why did you marry? Exactly. What what was it about? Her? I mean, I mean, because she had everything. <clears throat> right? Like if I looked across the board, right, she was she was more of a 10 or a nine on everything than a 10 in one area and a two in the other area. And I was like, yeah, that's what I want. Now, I, I dated a lot of women. I dated a lot of women that were really attractive and really cool. I just happened to get married at the point that I got married, but I wouldn't seriously date a woman unless she was super hot and super cool. I mean, they, they're out there. And so, you know, shout out to the Cosby family. But I'm just saying, <laughs> they out there. Go ahead, continue, be, be joy. What you say? I said, Whitney said, no bus drivers. He the male equivalent. <laughs> he is the male equivalent of no yeah. bus drivers. Call it out, be right. Right. Call it out. Call it out. No, I'm not that. Only oh yeah, you that. You that. <laughs> I'm not that. Like he, he wants the cream of the crop. Of whole, whole whole crop I want this. You're right. No, I will. I mean, I for myself, I need the cream of the crop. <laughs> but you want everybody else? She like, like, it off the like, If you're a robber collector, you better be fine as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you better be. Look. <laughs> All said, right, it is, it is. He said the women on this show are rare, high IQ and beauty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Keith. Okay, so we have we we have to you know we could probably be on here all night. This was really awesome. I always have some final thought questions where y'all only have twenty seconds, Whitney. Mm -hmm. I have to say that to Whitney <laughs> and Todd. You know the men always end up. Bus driver, be having a patty. But anyway, 
we have we have about seven questions that I want to ask you guys when we think about presentation. So it's always like, what do you think? You got 20 minutes. Okay. Or 20 seconds, not 20 minutes. Um, what value, um, what value do you bring in a relationship or in life that you find hard to maintain? I'm going to give y'all a little bit, a little bit of just thought. Ask that again, Nat. Say, what, what value in a relationship or in life do you find hard to maintain? What, what is one thing that you think you bring a value in life or in relationships that you think is hard to maintain when you think of presentation? I don't think anything is hard if you want to do it. You don't think anything is hard? Not if you're motivated to do it. I can think of one, but it's not really presentation related. What right? is it? What is it, B. Joy? It's like a patience and understanding. Like that mm -hmm. can bleed over into accepting <laughs> the wrong things. Because I'm real patient. I'm not a nag. I'm most understanding. Oh, I'm cool right. as a fan. But like you can be that way and it can get taken advantage of if you. Got you. Yeah. In that way. Awesome. So it, it, it can get old to be the, the bigger person all the time. Got you. Got you, Todd. Uh, I'm a I'm a communicator, but then uh, I get fed up with communication at some point, and I just need understanding, so I can get to a point where I'm just like, we don't have any understanding. The communication is fruitless. Okay, all right, Janice. I really can't think of anything, Natalie. I've got a blank there. Okay. Um, for the men, what is the most important thing you want women women to see in you or in whatever when dating? I'm gonna say because I know Whitney, you don't you don't need no women to see anything in you at this point in your life. Well, no, but you can ask me that because I can answer that generically. Okay, go ahead. I'm married at 48, I would say God. One of the best sermons I ever heard. Um, Pastor Walter Scott Thomason, New Summers Baptist Church in Baltimore, Maryland, said when people find you attractive, charismatic, appealing, it's not you that they're relating to. That's It's the God in you that they're relating to. Okay. You should. Well, I'm a Christian, but like minded, whatever you believe, whatever you believe, you should emanate that in a way that people get that from you. And if you do that, you can win. You'll win at life. You'll win at work. You'll win at with people you'll win in relationships and i don't think people look at it that way <laughs> now i just said some real heavy stuff it was real heavy but i believe it <laughs> you producers killing me but yeah i'm saying that people should get that from you yeah i believe that okay all right todd what is the most important thing you want women to see in you? Patience, maybe. Um, I might not always express it well, but I am a very patient person. Okay. Um, and I'll wait for you. All right. That's sexy. Okay. That's sexy, Todd. You gotta get it. Sexy. Like, okay, Todd. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Janice, what is the most important thing you want men to see in you? Joy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And kindness. All right. Be joy. I don't know. I didn't know you were going to ask the women, too. The most yeah. important thing I want somebody to see in me, I guess, integrity. Integrity. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What matters in dating? What matters in dating or presentation or looking? What matters when dating or looking for mates in their presentation? What matters most, do you think? In their presentation, I'll say mm -hmm. confidence, swag. Confidence, swag. Mm -hmm. If you're going superficial, we're saying just, you know, like what I see when I see you, mm -hmm. doesn't matter what you look like, how. That a lot of physical attributes don't matter, but if you present yourself like you're sure about who you are, that's automatically sexy. Okay, Todd. I, mean, I, I tend to go a little contrarian on this, so I would say how you show up for yourself. So I I 
tend to wait not to see how you show up in a room, but then how you show up for yourself in that room. Okay. All right. Janice. Ask it one more time, Nat. So what matters when dating or looking for a mate? What should matter when dating or looking for a mate in their presentations? Uh, bringing their whole true self. Okay. All right. Whitney. How they make you feel. Mm, okay. When does presentation not matter? Presentation always matters. It always matters. Always. Okay. Everybody agree? Well, you show with a bonnet, you should get kicked out. <laughs> no, I think in the long term, it doesn't matter so much. You want somebody that's going to be there with you and for you and show up when you're sick and, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think because beauty fades. So I don't think the physical matters so much. I think the character and qualities matter. Okay. But you got to have some kind of initial attraction too. So I, I get why it matters in the beginning. That's my answer anyway. Um, my answer would be it's relative. It's right. It depends on what contact you're talking about. If we, we're having a sexy night, you better show up sexy. If we're having a, you know, it's the weekday, you got to get up for work, show up in your bonnet. If we going out for gala, you better show up. Okay. All right. So it, the time and place. Janice? Relative. Mm. Mm. Uh, I think presentation does matter a lot. And I think that's one of the flaws in, in uh, long-term relationships. I think we end up taking it for granted. And... Uh, and don't put our best foot forward after a while. And I think it needs to continue to keep it fresh. I'm team makeup, hair, heels, outfit, five, six inch heels. I'm on that squad. And, <laughs> and I, it just, it just a little secret. My little secret is I, cool. my he, never, he, he, well, he never sees what I'm going to wear. I always like to surprise him. Okay. All right. And then how do you become unforgettable after you meet somebody you really like? Ooh. How do you become unforgettable? Do the most. Like? Oh, I just I am. Like people or say, man, how does he become unforgettable? Like people say relationships are 50-50. I don't think that's correct at all. I think relationships are 100-100. Give 100 goddamn percent all the time go ham first date go ham go all out every goddamn time you can and that should be what you do and then people will be like wow that's some hot ass shit okay how do you become unforgettable how does somebody become unforgettable i think be your best self as a woman, how do you become yeah, unforgettable? You the same answer. You unforgettable. How did you become unforgettable to Dean? I don't know. I, just, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I have. I don't. I don't know. I. I can't answer that question for him. I don't know. Okay, Todd. Well, mine would be a, a derivative of what what you said. It, it's it's. I don't, I don't think everybody can, can show up 100% every time. But when you can't, I'll show up 100%. And when I can't, you show up 100%. And that makes that makes it, you feel my reserve when I'm low, and I feel your reserve when you're low. And that will make you unforgettable to me and make you, like, uh, invaluable to me. Okay. Be joy. I just I am. I don't know. Girl, okay. get it. That's I'm, what I'm talking about. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I just I am. It's just <laughs> I'm unforgettable. Yeah, I'm just unforgettable on GP. <laughs> Finally, what two traits have changed since you were 20 up until where you are now? What are two traits that you have changed or what has changed about you? Two things that have changed about you. I was selfish. I used to be selfish in my twenties. I didn't even know it. I was a nice person, but I was it was me, my agenda. And okay. now I'm the opposite. That's okay. one. I think on the other one while somebody else answers. All right. Todd. 
Um, I think I told you this before, like I was uh, unhealed. And now and I feel like I'm closer. I am closer to being healed, a healed human being. Um, and more importantly, like I, I forgive myself and I have more compassion for myself, which allows me to have more compassion for others. Um, I like so I don't, I, don't need to, I don't need to forgive others because I'm not judgmental of them in the first place. I let them show up as they are. Okay. All right. Uh, Janice. I'd probably say I gave in too much, um, let too many people in my life, and now I understand who my friends are and what's really important. I've made a big change there okay. where I'm a little more selfish in uh, who I bring into my life. That's a big, big change for me. Okay. You've become more selective. Very. Okay. Whitney. You got the got the last one. I would say content. Like when I was younger, I had to have them all, and I had them all. You had them all. I had them all, and now I'm good. Okay. Content. All right, all right. Boom, and there you go. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Jens, and thank you, Whitney. All right, y'all. We will be back next week. Our conversation is about peace versus security hmm we'll talk more about that see y'all next week join us in the after party um we're going to continue this conversation and i will see you guys thanks guys this is fun 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 Woo! yes thank y'all i'll see y'all later join stacked after hours the spot where grown men and women gather to have candid, also honest discussions about the state of life, love, and more. The Spot is a hybrid of in-person and weekly virtual gatherings. Join our Facebook group and answer our daily questions, subscribe to our YouTube for our weekly live talk shows, and join us on Zoom for our talk show after parties for lively conversations with other opinionated grown and sexy professionals. Just search, like, follow, and subscribe to Stack After Hours on Facebook groups and YouTube. Also like and follow our brand pages at Be Stacked Wellness on Facebook and IG. So wherever you are, at home or abroad, pull out your laptop, tablet, or smartphone and join in the conversation with the members of Stacked After Hours. The Spot by Be Stacked Wellness. See you there. As you know, and if you are new to the Stacked family, we always keep our conversations lit and enlightening.